come on, cheer up. It sounds as if you did really well. I bet you get a second interview. <sighs> but I'm not a business major. I thought they said you didn't need a business degree. I know. But if someone has got a business degree, who do you think will get a job? Them or me? Hi. Hi. Come and help me cheer Calvin up. Look, I've got to rush. Sorry, I'm meeting someone. Don't disturb her. She doesn't mind. She likes you. What are you doing tonight? Nothing. Want to see a film? Hey, Angela. Yeah? Want to see a film with us tonight? I can't, sorry. Maybe next time. Uh, tell Mom I won't be in for dinner, okay? Um, by the way, how did you get on? You did fine. to hear the motion half an hour before the actual debate. I mean, half an hour. And then we sat there in this room waiting. We were all really nervous. I mean, what if the motion was something we knew nothing about? And then this girl walked in the room with a matter box. She put on a table and make a big deal about opening the box with the key. I want to say, hurry up, get on with it. We have only got half an hour. But she went terribly slowly. And then out come the motion, written on a scroll of paper, and guess what it was? What? East is East, West is West, and the two shall never meet. And we had to debate for the motion. Really? Yeah. And do you know what I said at that time? Uh, we went to a shop, uh, a shop that's quite similar to the one, the one that um, we went to in Switzerland. And, um, and, and the prices were, were amazing. They were so much cheaper. And actually, the facilities there were almost as good as they were in Switzerland. I was very surprised. We went there because we only had a short holiday and it wasn't really worth going all the way to Switzerland just for a few days skiing. So Dad said, let's give Korea a try. So we said, OK. But um, we didn't think it would be so nice. I've never been skiing. Really? You should give Korea a try then. It's very close. You can be there in just a few hours. Oh, and the best time to go is uh, December to March. Mandy. Have you ever been skiing? <laughs> no. He likes to go. Do you know each other? I mean, before today. No. I can give you the details if you want. The address and so on. Um, there is a beginner slope there and uh, plenty of good instructors. You could also hire equipment so that um, you don't have to buy everything and then find out you don't like it. So will we just hire some equipment and uh, So how long have you been a vegetarian, Angela? Oh, about three years already. Really? Yeah. How long? I'm on diet. Right. We're almost all here, shall we? Where shall we sit? Anywhere you like. Could you close the door, please? Oh, sorry. Okay. Now, the purpose of this session is for you to talk quite freely and openly. I'll set the ball rolling with a few questions, but please feel free to jump in and get a discussion going. And don't talk to me the whole time. Talk to each other. And don't feel that you have to agree with everything. Exchange ideas. Say what you feel. Mr. Lee over there will be listening, jotting down a few notes as we talk. But don't take any notice of him. Just forget about him, okay? You're used to being ignored, aren't you, Peter? Remember, join in any time you feel like it. Don't wait to be asked a question before you speak, OK? A large company contacts Crown Consulting. They want our services. They want to install a new communication system. Great. But when our people turn up, there's a lot of resistance from the middle management down. They feel threatened. They don't like change. Well, that's not surprising, really. Strangers walking into the workplace, looking around, well, they must know that we are there to change things, so they're suspicious. Worried that our recommendations might affect them in some way, worried they might even lose their jobs. Yes, but they're wrong. 
the representatives for Crown Consulting are not going to hurt them. They're going to help them. Help who? The company as a whole, yes. But there may be a need for streamlining that would involve some people in the company losing their jobs. But if that would help the company, it doesn't have to be a big thing like losing a job. I think people don't like change. They like to do things the old way. Many people are suspicious of technology. They think it is too complicated. They think it will be difficult or it will keep breaking down. Maybe they do not think they can operate it. I think that is why they may be suspicious. Yes, but if... Not because they think they may lose their job, but because they may think that we will make their jobs more complicated. We have to make them feel that we can help them. The new systems will not be introduced without the proper support. But if we're worried about what the lower level workers think, we will not do a good job. We must think of the whole company. If we think of the whole company, we think of everybody in it, not just of a few people who might be frightened of losing their jobs. Thinking about the whole company, what does that mean? Company profits, making the company more successful in its business dealings, re-engineering the way things work to make them work better. I agree. But how are you going to do all that if people close up on you? Of course they won't. They're paying for our services. They don't want to waste money. We are talking about the ordinary workers, not the top management. Good employees will put the company first. Of course. Yes, but... So I if they don't accept us, they're not good employees. It doesn't mean that. If there are employees who will not help us, then it is good for the company to know. Why? So that they can sack them? I think only the poor employees will be frightened to see us. The good ones need not be frightened. How can you say that? He's right. But why do you keep talking about sacking? Our job isn't like that. All we are trying to do is help integrate new information systems into existing frameworks. That's all. Nobody has to lose their jobs. Often people don't like change, and we should understand that. And if we understand it, we can be better in our job. How can we change things if we don't know what is changing? If the employees don't trust us, they won't give us the information we need. I agree with you, though. As the client, the company should always come first. Of course. OK. Good to hear what you all had to say. Now, I want to toss something else in the ring. As you know, we're a large and still expanding international company. OK, here we are in Hong Kong, and we've got offices in Japan and Thailand. What about the rest of China, the largest market in the world? How do we get in there? Ideas? Well, I think it is very important for a core of the staff to speak Mandarin. Yes, it is important to speak Chinese. How can you do business in China if you cannot speak Chinese? You cannot. It is impossible. It's not just speaking the language, though, is it? You've got to know people, know how they do things, win their trust. How can you win trust if you cannot speak Mandarin? <laughs> Nobody can understand you. But I think building personal relationships is as important as language. No Chinese, no relationship. You have to make contacts in China. Quancy is very important. How can you make contacts if you cannot speak the language? Yes, I know, I agree. You have to speak Mandarin. Of course. And if you need to speak it better, the company should provide training. Maybe somebody speaks Mandarin, but they need to speak it better. How about you? Do you speak Mandarin? Yes. But I can speak it better if I have some more lessons. If I had lessons and I thought it was getting better, I would be happy. I would want to go out and use it. I would feel happy with the company for giving me this chance. My Mandarin is pretty good, but I still welcome some more practice. I have a good suggestion. If we use the English language to continue to talk about it, there is no problem. This is a good opportunity to try to get to the level of practice. It's a shame, Mandy, but I'd rather we continued speaking in English. OK. How about living in China? Yes, certainly. Why not? We are part of the same country. I'll be proud to live in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, anywhere in China. Yes, of course. Especially if it were to help set up a new office. I love the challenge. I would go too. I expect to travel. That's one of the reasons I applied for the job. The chance to see new places and to work in different environments. And mainland China is an important market. I would go. But to be honest, I love Hong Kong. My family and friends are here. I wouldn't want to leave Hong Kong forever. 
I would miss it too much. Maybe I would get lonely. How can you be lonely with all your colleagues around you and all the work you will have to do? No time to be lonely. I'm sure I'll make friends with my colleagues and enjoy my work. But I love my home. So why work for a big international company like this? Why not work for a local firm, rent a flat near the office and uh, stay near your family? Family is important. If you haven't got a happy home to go back to, your life is empty. But they, they want me to buy a flat and... Um, you see yourself in 10 years' time. 10 years' time? I don't know. <laughs> How about you? Well, 10 years is a, is a very, very long time. Mm. Well, it's not long. My career goals are very clear. I want to work in strategic services. I want to work in change management, business process and technology competency. Then I want to head one of these groups and lead it on to further excellence. I want to have a new office in mainland China. That's my ambition. I want to become a better person. I try to put people first, but sometimes I can't help it. I put myself first and pretend that it's okay. Do you understand? I think many people are frightened of technology. I want to show that technology can make our life simple, not difficult. We have to explain and show how things work and listen to what people say. Our work should be bottom up, not top down. Well, I enjoyed our discussion very much. Thank you all for coming. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mrs. Bye-bye. You too. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Very nice talking to you. You too, Angela. See you. Bye. So what did you think? Well, I think we can make two clear offers. I agree. Which two? 